Today, I'm gonna to show you 10 tips for Windows 10 and 11. Some of these you may know, but I bet you a few of them you don't. I know I didn't. Stay tuned. I don't know about you, but I love watching videos of random Windows tips. Almost every time I see one of these videos, I pick up something new. And I'm hoping that's gonna be the case for you today in this video. However, if you knew all of the tips by the end of this video, then let me know in the comments below. Also, if you picked up something new, then let me know which one it was. Also, if there's anything that you think I left out of this video, make sure to mention it in the comments. I may make another one of these videos if I can find enough tips. And stay tuned to the end of the video because I have a bonus tip that's not only completely worthless, but it's really awesome at the same time. And I bet you didn't know about it. So, let's get into it. Okay, here we go, 10 tips for Windows 10 and 11. Now this should work in both Windows 10 and 11. However, there might be some differences and if there are, I'll go ahead and mention them. But to start out with, as you can see, my desktop is an absolute disaster. And that's where our first tip comes in. If you go on your desktop anywhere that there isn't an icon and right click, you can go to view and you can hit show icons. And if you do that, you can actually disable the icons in your desktop to make your desktop look a little bit cleaner. And once you wanna bring them back, you do the same thing, you right click, you go to view and you hit show desktop icons. Now, that's definitely a very common tip and most people probably know that one. However, there's another one here that you may or may not have known about. Since Windows 8, Microsoft has been trying to get people off of using control panel. So they've gotten people into using settings. And you know what, settings are great. They're getting a lot better, especially in Windows 11. I gotta say, I like settings from Windows 11 a lot better than Windows 10 but there's still a lot lacking. So there's times that you really do need to use control panel. And luckily Microsoft still gave you a way to get to the control panel. So the way you do it is you just click on your start menu and just type, start typing control. And once you do that, you should find the control panel app and it's the same control panel as you had before. But unfortunately, some of the components within the control panel have been moved to settings. Like for instance, if you go to your system information, it just opens settings. And unfortunately, that kind of stinks, but at the same time, you know, at least we have access to the control panels to a certain extent. Okay, so this next tip is one that I didn't know about, but it's one that I'm gonna use for a long time to come. And this one here is gonna be in command prompt. So to open up your command prompt, you just click on the start button, go ahead and type CMD, and you should have your command prompt. And since I have terminal installed, it's gonna open terminal automatically. But that's okay because this tip works in both. And what you wanna do is you wanna hold down the control and shift key while you're moving your mouse wheel. And as you can see, you can change the transparency within the control panel. So if you happen to be copying something from a website, you'll be able to see it. So if I'm gonna open this website up right here, and as you can see, now my control panel floats easily over the top of the web page. And you can type whatever command you may wanna type just like that. Now, I don't know about you, but this tip right here with a translucent command prompt is a really cool tip. I'm actually really glad I found this one right here and it's really easy to do. Also, once you close the command prompt and open it again, it goes back to its default translucency. So you'll have to do this every time you open it. But if you use terminal, you can adjust the transparency for every time you open it. So just keep that in mind as well. Okay, so for the next tip, I'm gonna go ahead and close these right here. The next tip we're gonna talk about are icons that are pinned down in the taskbar right here. Obviously, if you click on an icon, the application that you're using will open up. But have you ever tried right-clicking on the icon? If you do that, it'll give you a whole bunch of different options. Like for instance, from Explorer right here, you can see all of my pin shortcuts and all of my frequently open folders. And if you come over here, we can right click on Chrome and you can see the recently closed tabs as well as different tasks that you can do. You can open a new incognito window and in different applications, you can do different things. Like in, here in Terminal, you can open a new PowerShell, a command prompt, or a new terminal window if you wanted. And since we're talking about mouse buttons, let's talk about mouse buttons a little bit more for a minute here. There are several different shortcuts that you can do with your mouse that come in really handy. So let's go ahead and get a web page open right here and I'll show you one of them real quick. So as we can see right here, we're on my merch store. By the way, if you're looking for some cool t-shirts, this is the place to get them. Go ahead and visit my merch store, it helps me out a lot. And you can get any t-shirt that I typically wear in videos right here. I have a lot of people making comments on them sometimes. This is where you can get them. But 
When it comes to your mouse button, there's several different shortcuts that you can use in your mouse button. So the first one I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click on the tab right here. And let's say you wanna open one of these pages, but you don't wanna open it in the same window. You wanna open it in a new window. Well, you can easily right click and hit open link in new tab. However, there's an easier way to do this. If you just click the middle mouse button, it will automatically open it in another tab. This is one that I use constantly. So it's a tip that I've known about for quite some time. But if you haven't, hopefully this one will be as useful to you as it is for me. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. We're gonna open an explorer window. And this is another use for the middle mouse button. If you Have you ever had an explorer window open? Like say you're inside of a different folder or something and you wanna open up another instance of explorer. Well, to do that, all you do is push on the explorer icon from your taskbar with the middle mouse button and it'll open up another instance. As many times as you do that is as many windows as it'll open up. This is another really useful tip that I didn't know about until doing the research for this video, but hopefully it'll come in just as handy for you. Now, the final mouse shortcut I wanna show uses the right button. This one I think is probably one of the most valuable tips in this entire video, at least to me it is. If you have a compressed folder or any file that you wanna have more options to when you drag and drop it, instead of using your left mouse button, try to use your right mouse button. So I got this right here, this little zip file. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my right mouse button and I'm gonna drag it and drop it. And it gives me all of these different options. I can extract it here. So if I click extract, it extracts all the documents into a folder. But you can also do this, like for instance, say you wanna copy this right here to another folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that folder up that we just created. And I'm gonna take this notes right here. And normally if you click and drag it, it will move it into the folder that you want it. But let's say you don't wanna move it. Say you wanna just copy it. So if I click the right button and drag it into this folder, it'll give me options. And from there I can hit copy and it'll copy it to there. Now, I don't know about you, but that tip right there, I have used it an incredible amount since finding out about it while doing the research for this video. And you know, it's probably a tip I should have known about. And if you knew about it, let me know in the comments below. But if you didn't, hopefully it'll come in useful for you. I know it really has for me in the last week since I figured it out. Okay, so the next tip we're gonna look at is one that I think comes in extremely handy, especially if you're accustomed to using smartphones. Most people know that smartphones have a clipboard and you can store tons of different things on it. You can copy several different things and paste them at different times. But in Windows, typically, if you have, like for instance, let's go ahead and open a notepad up right here. Normally, if you hit copy and paste, so I'm gonna type copy here, and then we're gonna go ahead and highlight it right click and hit copy. And then if you right click and hit paste, it pastes the one thing. Now on the flip side, let's say I write paste and then I highlight paste, I hit copy and then go down to my next line and do the same thing and I hit paste, it gives me paste. But now let's say I wanna paste the word copy like I did before. Well, that's okay. The easiest way to do that is instead of just hitting control V for your paste like you normally would, Instead, hit Windows V and it opens up your clip clipboard. This clipboard will store all the different things that you've copy and pasted over time, like right here, my YouTube address. Now the clipboard function might be turned off on your system. And if it is, it'll still open the clipboard, but it'll tell you right there that it's turned off. So you'll have to push a button to turn it on. And go ahead and push the button because this comes in really handy. And just remember when you paste from now on, hit Windows V instead of Control V when you do a paste and it should open the clipboard up automatically. Okay, so the next one we're gonna do is since we're copy and pasting, sometimes it might be a good idea or you may need a screenshot of your Windows desktop or whatever program you might be using. And the easiest way to do that is by typing the Windows key and print screen at the same time. The screen will go dark for a second and it will take a screenshot of the screen. So if we go into our pictures and go into our screenshot, you can see that now we have a screenshot of our screen. But let's just say you don't need the whole screen. Say you just want a section of it. Like for instance, say you wanna take a screenshot shot of our notepad open right here. The way you do that is by holding the Windows key, Shift, and S, and that'll open up the snipping tool. And with the snipping tool, all you gotta do is take the part of the screen you want and highlight it just like this, and there you go. It'll take a screenshot just of the section you highlighted. So if we go down into our pictures now and into our screenshots, as you can see, 
there's a screenshot of just a notepad. Now, this next tip, this is one that I've used for a really long time, and that tip is Windows Shake. What you would do is you would take the top of whatever window you happen to be using, and you shake it, and it would make everything else minimized. Now, this is a really common feature that I'm sure everyone knew about, but they disabled it in Windows 11 for some reason. Let me show you how to turn it on again. So what you do is go ahead and open up your settings, and then from settings, go into system, and then scroll down to multitasking. And from here, you'll see title bar window shake. And go ahead and turn that on. And once you turn it on, go ahead and give it a test. So we're gonna take, say we want this to be the only screen that's open. All we do is shake it, and everything else disappears. Now let's say you want everything to come back. You do the same thing. Go ahead and grab the title bar and shake it, and everything comes back the way it was before. Now, honestly, I don't know why they disabled this feature in Windows 11. It's kind of annoying, actually, but it's nice that they give you a really easy way to re-enable it. So let's move on to the next tip. This next tip is probably a little obvious, but I just wanted to point it out for people because there might be some people that don't realize the power of the task manager in Windows. So let's go ahead and right click on our taskbar, open up task manager here, and I wanna to go to the performance tab specifically. This is the tab that I wanna concentrate on right here for this specific tip. If you ever need any kind of hardware info on a computer, and let's say you just don't have the software you normally would use to give yourself detailed hardware info, that's okay because there's an amazing amount of information that you can learn from the task manager right here. For instance, on my CPU, CPU, you can tell which CPU you have, you can find out the base speed for the CPU, the current speed it's running at, as well as the utilization, which comes in really handy. But on top of that, it also shows you the amount of cores and the amount of logical processors. And if you continue down here, you can see a lot of different information. Like for instance, I have virtualization disabled. If you happen to be using something like VirtualBox to run virtual machines, it wouldn't be a good idea to keep that disabled. And it's an easy way to find out if that's the case by simply looking at the performance tab in your task manager. And another neat little feature here is if you go into memory, it also shows you the speed that your memory is currently running at. So if you have like in my case, like I have PC 3200, if you wanna know that your system is actually running it at 3200, you can easily tell from the performance tab inside a task manager. And also, if you look right here where it says slots used, this comes in a lot for me, especially when I'm looking at a notebook and I wanna know how many slots the computer has and how the memory is distributed in those slots because I may have a customer that has low memory and I wanna upgrade it for them, so I wanna know how I can quote for how much that memory is gonna cost based on if they have a, a free slot or not. So in this case, I'm using 32 gigs of RAM and I have no free slots because I've got four of four. But if you highlight your mouse over the four of four, it will actually tell you exactly what capacity module is in which slot. And Honestly, I think that comes in really, really handy. And then also, as you go through the list here, there's lots of other information that you can find on here, like for your SSD, the capacity and current write speeds and things of that nature, as well as in your ethernet, you can get your IP address, not only your IP version four, but also your version six IP address. And this is gonna be more applicable to your local network than it is gonna be your external network. Obviously, this right here is my internal IP addresses, but it does give me my DNS name as well as different information like that. And then if you go down to GPU, it also breaks your GPU down into different categories. Like for instance, right now, the video encoding is at 70%. And obviously the reason for that is because I'm screen recording this for YouTube. So you can actually take the different functions of your GPU and kind of break them up a little bit so you can see exactly what your GPU is doing in real time. And on this one also is within the task manager, you do get the GPU temperature which I don't know if this works with all different GPUs. It does in the case of this one, which is an RTX 3060. You can check this out on yours, and if it doesn't show your temperature, let me know in the comments below. I'd like to know kind of how universal the temperature is on this one, but it is another thing that would be really nice to have that for CPU, but unfortunately, I guess you can't ask for everything. Okay, so now the next tip that I wanna show you is another really neat one, and that one has to do with your Alt tab. If you click Alt tab, it'll It'll give you all the different applications that are running. But for instance, let's say you have something like in my case, I have Chrome minimized right now and it's not being used. So what I can do is if I push the delete key while continuing to hold alt, if I hit delete, it will actually kill that app while it's running. And I can essentially do that with everything that's running through the alt tab interface. So 
That was 10 tips. They were pretty good tips, I think. Some of them I'm sure you knew about. Some of them you probably didn't. So remember, let me know in the comments below which tips you didn't know about. But I did promise you a bonus tip. And that bonus tip is coming right now. And I just have to warn you ahead of time how worthless this tip is. It really provides no function at all. But it's really awesome at the same time. Let me show you. Okay, so this tip specifically has to do with YouTube, not Windows itself. But I had to keep it into this list because it was just too cool to leave out. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Chrome here. I'm going to open up YouTube. I'm going to go to my page right here. And we're just going to randomly click on a video. Let's go ahead and hit this one right here. And we're going to jump ahead a little bit so we have some taskbar right here. And then what you're going to want to do here is, as you can see, the taskbar just shows you essentially where you are in the video. And it's just a boring red line. However, we're going to jazz this up a little bit. And to do that, all you got to do is type the word awesome. Make sure you're not clicking on anything else on the screen right here. So make sure that you're only in the video and you're not in the search bar because you don't want to search for it. And then all you have to do is just type A-W-E-S-O-M-E -E for awesome and you get this really psychedelic blinking taskbar, which, like I said, was completely worthless. But it is awesome, right? I think it's pretty awesome. Unfortunately, it doesn't stay that way. For every time you go to a page, you're going to have to do the same thing. So if we click on the same video again, we jump ahead. Oh. Look at that. It does actually stay. I wonder if it stays through closing the browser. Let's do a little experiment. We're gonna learn, we're gonna learn live here. Okay, so I'm gonna close the browser. We're gonna open a new one up. We're gonna go back into YouTube. We're gonna go back into videos, back into this video. And nope, it doesn't look like it stays that way through closing your browser. But it does look like it stays that way, at least in your current session. So let's test this again real quick. A-W-E-S-O-M-E. -E. So we got it blinking now, and we're gonna click on another video. Let's click on this one right here and see what it does. And there we go, it's psychedelic. Yeah, you know, very worthless tip, but still cool nonetheless. So, were any of these tips new to you? Let me know in the comments below if there was anything I gave you that you didn't know before. Also, let me know which one of these was your favorite tip. I think mine was probably the translucent command prompt, but you let me know what yours was. This video definitely covered a lot of really basic Windows tips. If you want some more advanced tips, then check out this video where I give you some pretty cool registry tweaks for Windows 11. Also, if you like that video, there's a part two as well. As always, you guys have a great day.